Okay, I think we're ready. This is the Art of the Garnish um, Corona Cocktail Party, the seventh in a series. So I hope you're all tuning in, I, I thank you. I think we corrected the sound issue. So um, if it's looking good, give us a thumbs up. Um, we try to monitor Bill, we'll try to see if Bill is uh, my darling husband and he's also the Marty Scorsese of this whole event. Hello. <laughs> Say hello, Bill. So he's been taking taking some good videos. Um, so how was everybody's week? It was good. Uh, for me, I uh, put together our, um, I made these little packages for garden clients and people locally, and then I found that I could mail them. So it's, um, had a choice of four veggies and herbs and three seed balls. It's a sort of uh, ancient way of putting, organic way also of putting seeds uh, to, to for transport and so on that you could plant them in the ground. So I got French radishes, watermelon radishes, and sunflowers. And uh, I asked my friend Jean Gall, who's a wonderful botanic artist, if she would um, render an image of the sunflower and then a black and white one so that adults and kids could color. So um, so that was great. So I was delivering those. And then one of my clients, as I think some of you saw when I put on um, Instagram, uh, the images that uh, they, uh, Louis, especially was responsible for it, but Joe's family uh, created a homage garden for their Uncle Bob who died recently. So we put that in um, yesterday and then the, <laughs> this crazy uh, polar vortex came to our area. So it was, I was, you know, up most of the night like checking on the temperature of things, but it was, it only, only got to, um, I think 37 here. So we have a little bit of mitigating, you know, warmth here because of the, um, the, uh, the water and so on. So, and then we had lots of plantings and spring cleanups and things like that. Um, so that keeps you kind of crazy busy. Um, so I hope you all are well. So, um, first I want to start again by thanking our first responders, the doctors, nurses, the EMTs, the firemen and the police who are helping us through all this uh, corona. Hey, Google Lower. I mean, I love music, right? Everyone has to have that hit. For those of you who don't know me, um, I am a horticulturist. That's why I start talking about plants and so on. I'm a garden designer, but I'm the author of first the, uh, Long, the Hamptons and Long Island Homegrown Cookbook. So, so many of you were with me for that adventure. And uh, that still, it sounds like unbelievable. You know, it's really fantastic. Um, Bill, is the sound okay? Is it looking okay? Is everyone thinking it's okay? So, I'll continue. And uh, I'm also the author of this latest book, The Art of the Garnish. And every week since the coronavirus started, I thought it'd be a good distraction and a way to go with things. And um, recently in trying to figure out what the issue is with all this clicking sounds and everything, and we were taking it on my um, iPhone, and Facebook doesn't really provide any guidance or anything, uh, so we sort of figured out now we're using the iPad, so I hope that that's gonna be a better, better experience. But every week I've been using the garnish, for the most part, from our garden. So there was the pickled cherry blossoms for the cherry blossom season, so as I said, regrettably that Sakura Matsuri, the Cherry Blossom Festival time is over, but Haname, which is flower viewing, continues. So this week, oh, and last week I had the tulips, so the tulip blossoms, and they're still going strong. So for me and my clients, um, I plant a number of spring bulbs from Van Avelin. I love them. They're the Sheepers, John Sheepers people also. Um, they have both, both. As seeds and bulbs and the challenge is to provide um, spring bulbs that have texture, height, color and then the different blooming times so you have something all the way almost till Ju June, end of June or so on. So our tulips are still going strong and um, people come by because they're on the walks now down to the 
um, Bay Shore Trail there. It gives them something, you know, to get out and see nature. Um, and they love it. They just, they're like oohing and aahing. So I just, I feel like, oh, it just makes people happy. You love that as a gardener. You love hearing that. And when my clients, you know, especially like Keenan and Ted, GD, she's like, this is like a botanical gardener. She just loves it. So those were the edibles. And then this week is lilacs. So um, I'm going to make a drink before I share with you about a little bit about the lilacs. Sound is good. Sound is good? Who said that? Jordan. Jordan! She's my girl. She's my fashion girl. So not too many years ago, but when we were getting ready for a um, New Jersey magazine, we were going to shoot our home, photograph, not shoot, but photograph our home here. So here you can see I've frozen the ice with the lilacs in it. And lilacs are edible. We'll, we'll get to that also. Um, but anyway, George, so I had ordered this, uh, she's, she's just all about fashion. So I ordered this, um, really beautiful outfit, uh, from a designer and, uh, it didn't come. And so I was a little bit frantic as you might imagine, you know, and, uh, I raced over to a local store and there was Jordan and she was so helpful. She just knew what to pick and what to do. So. I still have all, you know, you can see it's still a you know, Jersey uh, magazine, but the, the beauty of the gardens and tablescaping and my outfit. And Jordan's getting married uh, in October. This is going to be the last of this pretty gin. I think this is what Ken and Wendy brought us for a Lunar New Year party, but this time I made gin. So I like it because it's very floral. And uh, it's going to be a, almost like a, just a gin and tonic, but you can see I love the fever tree. I love the Q tonic. This has a little bit of elderberry, you know, that's in it. And then a little shot of the plum bitters. I told you I'm making bitters for, for next week's. It's from, um, I'm making with dandelions and burdock, so that's gonna be very interesting. So here, I'll take a couple of these fresh. Look how pretty that is. You can also add a little bit of twist that Bill was generously going to. This is our wedding crystal, so Jordan, I hope you can't wait to see yours. So anyway, I'm, I'm creating a um, customized cocktail for their wedding um, later. And I just think that's such a lovely thing to have. So it incorporates some of your passions, your likes, um, you know, favorite. I, I try to get an idea of the profile from favorite movies and gardens and uh, books and plants and traditional um, cocktails that you might, that people might enjoy. And then you can create a special cocktail. And I did it, you can see in the book, there's Amy's Amour, and I did it for my cousin Amy. Uh, for her uh, bridal shower. Oh, that's so refreshing. I love it. I love it. So you can see that's pretty, pretty easy to make. So now a little bit about the lilacs. Um, of all of our senses, um, smell or fragrance is the one that most triggers memory. And because lilacs bloom around Mother's Day, and most everybody has lilacs in their yard, at least I'll tell you in the Northeast, um, it came to be thought of as, as you know, Mother's Day, it's Mother's Father. So everyone loves lilacs very, very much. Um, when I worked at Brooklyn Botanic Garden, we were very proud that we had such a beautiful collection. I think there's like seven in the, of all the colors that you can have. But I, I, um, I want to tell you what, what they mean. Oh, the most traditional David, flower. David says hi. Hi, David. How are you, darling? I saw you commented on um, Charles's mother's pie, so I have to write back about that also. Mm, how are things in Miami? Okay, so but I, I read that carnations are the symbol of Mother's Day and, and not, <laughs> not lilacs. 
but they said because the Blessed Mother, the Virgin Mary, she cried over Jesus' death, so they turned that into a symbol of undying love. You know, every plant has symbols. Check sound again. Check sound again? What do you mean? Ask people if they can hear. Oh. Because your mother says no. Mommy's in the house? Mother's in the house? Can you hear? Maybe she has to turn it up, so I don't know what people are saying. Bill, can you see on the side if it's going up? Okay. So here's some symbolism. Um, well, first, the, let me do the horticultural part. Is that um, the? It's so easy to grow, and it's so beautiful, and it comes in so many colors. So lilac, it belongs to a genre of syringa. And the common lilac is known as syringa vulgaris. So the English word lilac was stolen from the French and the Spanish word lilac. The Arab and Persian also has a remarkably similar word, which is called lilac, L-I-L-A-K, so lilac. The granddaddy of most European and Asian languages is Sanskrit, and they had a similar word, nyla. All right, Bill wants me to turn on the music. So, hey, Google, lower. It might be computer but everybody words. loves music in a speakeasy, and this is our speakeasy that I recreated from a bar that I saw in Havana, um, and it, we were doing it as part of our second stage recon reconstruction of the house, renovation of the house, uh, the same time I was writing Art of the Vine. This is so refreshing, I'm going to love this drink. So coming back to... Um, the symbolism, you know, for the plant lore, um, which is so fascinating, but white lilacs symbol, symbolize purity and innocence. Uh, violet, overall violet, I can't even talk, have another one. Violet lilacs symbolize spirituality, and blue lilacs symbolize happiness and tranquility. Pink is for life and strong friendships, and magenta lilacs symbolize love and passion and the thrill of being alive. So you can see a little bit of the magenta here and I thought that's like so poetic, really. Overall, lilacs are associated with one's first love or the first time one feels love for someone. And then there was some folklore that I looked up that the Russians hung them over their baby's bed, bed for wisdom, to inspire wisdom. And in Victoria, England, lilacs were worn a lot by widows because it showed the love that they had for their lost husbands. And in New England, they grew them because they thought it would drive away evil. So I think there's a lot of witch things going on up there in New England, which is kind of <laughs> funny in a way. Hmm. But anyway, most lilacs are known for the uh, use in beauty products and cosmetics and fragrance. I mean, everyone seems to love the smell of, of uh, lilacs and used in essential oils. They can treat skin disorders and um, combat bacterial infections. I don't think anything about virus, but it can hurt, right? It can prevent some stomach disorders and it can act as a fever reducer. So it was used in the old days, it was used to treat malaria, but it was a little bit spotty. But I think if you use it with the quinine, <laughs> you'd be very safe for combating malaria. We'll talk about the plants used to combat that later. But uh, some herbalists use it to treat some skin issues like sunburn and rashes or minor cuts and scrapes. And um, Roberta said you carried them at your prom. Oh, my God, I did. At my junior Roberta, you have the mind of a steel trap that is unbelievable my dearest dearest friend from school from little kids to big kids um yeah that was my junior prom and i wore an asian kind of senior no it was junior she said senior. it was senior. no i think my senior prom i had gardenias in my hair and i had that very sexy dress i'll show you it had like a cut out here and that's a really funny story because we were in Florida right before and uh, trying to get back for the prom and Tommy and Betsy were driving. I was supposed to be like the talker and keep them up, but they were going to sleep and I knew we weren't going to make it. So we were at a Stuckey's. Remember those places you'd sit for a little while, Stuckey's? So I waited about 15 minutes and then I woke them up and I said, we've been here for an hour. We got to get going. Anyway. 
it took off and it was like an hour later when they said you tricked us and I did but yeah it was so I had that red Asian dress on with this and Tommy and I, and I carried lilacs I can't believe she remembered that that is incredible uh, thank you thank you Roberta. so we've been having cocktails every Friday on a Instagram messenger and we've been doing with family we've been doing zooms on Sundays and uh, Bill and I bought some stock in Zoom, so I figure it's a Zoomy world, right? So it can't hurt. We'll hopefully see where that goes. And we did buy some pharmaceutical stocks. I don't know if others, you know, feel like, you know, there might be some promise there. I'm trying to look for the good and support that. So this is like a gin and tonic, um, you know, made with the with the lilacs. Oh, and I have to point out, those are still some tulips that are coming there. And then these are viburnum, which is blooming now. And I really encourage people, it's a real favorite of horticulture to have viburnum. Um, it's just so beautiful. It looks like little teeny hydrangeas. So you can float them or you can, you know, put them in the vase, you know, like this. What else do we have that's blooming now? Oh, the lilies of the valley are starting, which is just incredible. The other thing I wanted to share with you, which is really fun, I bought this some years ago, so I may um, adulterate a little bit of this, but I wanted to show you, this is, this, there is one vodka that has it turn in it, it, but. Turn it. Turn it, like okay, this? Yeah. But this is from um, a pea, a pea plant. And it's all natural, has a little bit of sugar, but when you put it in a drink, it turns it blue. And I just thought that was so cool to share with you for, to make it even more lilac-y, which is fun. So you can have all these natural things. Can you see how it's making it purpley? Oh, and I wore a purple top. I hope you see that in all the fashionista friends of mine will say like this is um, tanzanite and the same with the earrings but I was trying to go purple and this my cousin Missy gave me this magnolia I wish I could afford the Chanel one but I love this I wear cocktail rings beautiful this is a story this woman who she has a place out in uh, Huntington out in New Jersey uh, area and uh, I'm sorry <laughs> That's my beautiful glasses from It's Not Just Cocktails. I was showing you all last week. I don't know if you could see or hear it, but look how sexy that glass is. I have several um, from their collections. This is another one that I used for the cherry blossom, but look at that one. So she finds these incredible vintage glasses. Again, it's, um, it's not just cocktails. You have to look for that. Um, But anyway, so this woman has this place out in New Jersey, out west, and she um, has the home of where Nancy Drew lived. Not Nancy Drew, but the author of Nancy Drew stories when she lived. So she, she, you know, has her, it's a beautiful estate. We went on a garden tour there. But she also designs jewelry. Now, I think lilacs are beautiful for jewelry, and I wanted to, you know, comment on that, how inspiring it is. But these are... Um, what are these? They're not snakes, but they're eels. And she says everybody has them in their backyard. And then they go back to their, the their, Sargasso in, Sea. In their streams. Yeah, in their streams, in the water and so on. So she said everybody has them. Then, then they return. It's like butterflies in a way. They go back to the Sargasso Sea to mate, like, I don't know, every eight or ten years. So I had to buy this ring. It was, like, kind of cool looking. Can you see it? Don't look at my nails. It's so awful with no manicure or anything. Um, and Misery does love company. I was watching an Instagram live with Martha Stewart and Kevin Sharkey about their flowers. And she was saying how bad her nails were in the hangnail. But she got some famous manicurist to come in and help her. So <laughs> I'm not having that. But um, so anyway, when this lady was talking about these eels that everybody has in their backyard and everyone was kind of incredulous like I never saw that or whatever and then one of my friends from Manhattan she said I live on 84th street and there's no eels in my backyard I can guarantee you <laughs> which is great I love it 
So now I'm going to make a, uh, I mean the Duchess Martini goes with everything, so you have to have that. But here's another uh, drink that you can make with the lilacs. You can continue to enjoy this. I just love that color, but you can, so here we're going to put a little bit of the vodka in. And the simple syrup I made today, and I'll share the pictures on Instagram, but you take you know, half parts, whatever, how much you want to make, but half sugar, half water, and then some of the lilacs, and pour that in. It, and I find that the lilac simple syrup tastes a little bit um, nutty. It's supposed to be lemony and flowery, so, okay. What did you just put in there? Oh, I put in Dolan Vermouth. Now, when I made a, you know, a uh, thing for Gigi and Ted because she lost her wonderful father last week, and I think I was sharing with you all. He was such a great man. He was the mayor of Long Branch, and just he loved Frank Sinatra. He loved Martini, so I made a little. So here I'm coating the sides of the glass those are some of what i use for the simple syrup so i figured i'd use that again and then i'm putting it into some sugar that i put the blue in this butterfly pea mixture in there and then i put the so anyway, I made for Jean and Ted like her father's favorite martini with um, ingredients, and I gave her some. I like those little half potatoes that I think that's good with the martini that you can put the little bit of sour cream and then the dill on top of that. And I made some homemade truffles, chocolate truffles. And I think that would go great with this. I don't know what you all are making for Mother's Day, but that would be a nice treat. And I think all these candy lilacs, um, fresh lilacs, they would all go terrific on cupcakes or cakes or things. Look how pretty that is. So you have like a purpley sugar, and then you've got the... Um, Martini with the simple syrup. Mm. Oh, that's pretty. Let me put a few of these in. You have to make sure you wash them, of course. Everyone does that. Put it in. Can you let them see, Belle, how pretty? I was thinking of something purple that I could put out on the bar, which would be cute. But I use these in some of my different tablescapes. But these are these old magic eight balls, and I've used them, I don't know, St. Patrick's Day and different things. But it used to be, you turn them over, and like it'll give you a little saying. So like, I don't know, stay out of trouble. This one says, <laughs> verify life. You know, it's like you can have some fun. So when you're planning your cocktail parties, you know, you give your guests something to delight them or surprise them. Mom, can you hear okay, Mother? It's all good? So, again, I'm saying that the lilac, to me, tastes a little bit nutty, which is different. Most people think it tastes lemony or florally, um, which makes perfect sense. It's, it's a flower. But you can use it in salad, you can use it in baked goods, you can use it on all kinds of things. Um, these are some of the left the chocolate truffles that I made for Gina and Ted. And um, we're going to share it tomorrow for Mother's Day. And I'm hoping to make a cake or cupcakes with the lilac too as a you know, glazed uh, topping for it. Um, the other thing I want to encourage you is that one of the great um, mixologists from the Art of the Garnish, uh, Joss Session, he has Ice and Alchemy on Instagram, and he is so terrific. And um, he's giving classes, $20 for two people. So 
I'm definitely signing up. I mean, he is a genius, and um, you can see his cocktails in the book, and it's also like the featured page on Amazon, you know, when you go to the, my editor, my publisher pulled that out. So I'll do a quick reading. Um, this is about syrups. So talking about simple syrups, which again was what I made with the lilacs. Okay. So syrups. There's a good reason why the best bars are stocked with an array of flavored syrups. They boost the flavors of fresh seasonal ingredients to add a touch of sophistication and nuance to a cocktail. Syrups are also a great flavoring agent for still or sparkling water. So if you want a mocktail or want to dial it back sometime, you can go with that. The basis of any cocktail syrup is simple syrup, which is aptly named because, well, it's simple to make. It requires only two ingredients, water and sugar, in equal proportions. Heat up the water, add the sugar, and stir while continuing to cook until the sugar has dissolved. Once it's dissolved, add an herb or a spice, stir to combine, and let the mixture cool for a few hours. You strain out the flavoring component, whether it's, you know, I've made rhubarb, lapsung, souchong tea, the lilacs, roses, we'll do that in June. Um, anyway, and you store in the refrigerator for, you can put it there for up to a month to ensure a fresh cocktail adventure. So I'm encouraging you all to try to think of you know, interesting and fun, whether it's sweet or savory cocktails that you can enjoy on a seasonal basis. And simple syrups are a great way to do that. So I think we're at the end of our Art of the Garnish cocktail party. Does anybody have any thoughts or questions? Bill's in charge of the thing, but it's hard to do both. <laughs> Yes? Can you read a bill or no? Okay, cheers everybody. And let me just say, happy Mother's Day to my dear, blessed mother, Virginia. I know my father's smiling down, joy from heaven uh, on all of us. Tomorrow we'll have uh, an enhanced Zoom family um, Mother's Day party with nieces and nephews and things. And my mother so loves that. And even during the pandemic, we bundled her up and brought her up to our house for the Zoom, and then we have dinner here. So tomorrow we'll have a very special dinner. Um, lots of flowers, lots of cocktails, lots of champagne, and uh, I toast all of you. I love you so much. And just remember, you know, there's no doggy bag for a cocktail, so you have to enjoy the moment and the time but also the best ingredient, remember, whether it's food or cocktails, the best ingredient is love. So cheers. <laughs>